the main bed casting is now um, complete. Uh, give it a week or so for the paint to, to harden properly. Um, and then we can mount it onto the base and start uh, the process of reassembly. Um, the head, the casting is really bad. Um, there's major flaws which I've had to fill either with uh, metal filler. Um, these sides have been completely rebuilt out of uh, P38 filler because they, you know, the casting was so thin in places. Yeah, not not good at all. Nothing that's, you know, not recoverable, but um, it's, it's going to be a lot of work to get a really nice finish on that. I'm considering. Um, putting some resin in here just to dampen any vibrations. Um, I'll have a look, see what's available. Now I've noticed that it seems that the carriage uh, machining isn't, isn't centered if you like. You know, I, I would expect this to be the full width of that land and maybe just over it. And that explains the very large gap between the keeper and the edge of like over an eighth of an inch, more than that actually, nearly a quarter of an inch. And the holes aren't in the center, that they're over to the outside edge. It's like this, this edge has been cut too far back it should be about there because you haven't you're not resting on the full land now my belief that this edge here has been wrongly machined an eighth of an inch too far to the rear it should be here is supported by the fact that that the the holes for the oilers are also about an H off of the center. That gap is way too big. And the amount of land on the, the underside of the keeper is not even an eighth of an inch. It's hardly any support there at all. And that's apart from the fact that it's loose, you know, that, that is not good for stability. Now, the fact that there's, you know, a sixteenth or slightly more on this end, um, you know, you don't have full uh, support over that is not going to make a great deal of difference, I doubt. It's just wrong. A bigger issue is the fact that the... Um, there's hardly any, you know, there's only point contact on the, the Vs. But, you know, I, I can scrape that in. The holes for the keeper plate are as typical with so much else on this thing and, and, and the mill, all over the place. They're not in line at all. There's a millimetre difference between here and that hole and that one. Uh, it, that's 6.9, 5.9, 6.4, and 7.2. So they've been drilled by hand. And when you look at how this lines up, well, it just doesn't. It's difficult to see, but um, this hole is nowhere near, which is why it was so difficult to get out, you know. For that hole to line up, it would need to be like that. It really is unnecessarily bad because, you know, the use of simple fixtures could make their life a lot easier, make it faster produce and uh, get a better result.
on the plus side, I see, given the evidence before me, I see no danger of China being a threat to anyone if this is the level of engineering prowess that they possess. You see, there's always a silver lining. Well, the first coat of primer has now been rubbed down. Um, it may seem like I've put it on just to take it all off, but really the, the, the purpose of this first coat is to give it a uniform appearance so that I can um, see clearly if there's any areas that need specific attention. Now when it comes to bearings you have to be really careful if you're replacing the bearings. Um, the obvious thing, make sure you get the right bearing, but um, there are a lot of knockoffs, fakes uh, out there. And it's important to make sure that you get a genuine item. So take your time, do your research, make sure you go to um, a recognised distributor for that particular mate. Uh, in this case, I've used Acorn Industries, who I've used um, numerous times in the past. Uh, they are main dealers for the leading brands of bearings you know you're going to get the right, the genuine article. And contrary to popular belief, uh, they don't cost any more than going to Bearings or Us or any eBay store or wherever. So the absence of a lathe to turn up a, um, a bung to fit that nicely, what we're going to use is the outer ring, which is a, a good fit on there and a little bit of um, ply, those off cuts are always useful. That will centre that and that fits nicely in there to stop that moving. This goes underneath like that and then plate goes in there, the bearing, let's line that up, that centers that, and then we can put the cap on and uh, screw that down and that will pull that in. Before I do that, I'm going to put the, the outer race in the freezer for a few hours. Well, both the bearings are now in. And that's the little tool I use to press the, uh, pu pull the bearing in. So the outer race, both outer races are now in. Um, Although I stuck the outer races in the freezer for a few hours, uh, it does make it slightly easier. But you still need a bit of um, bit of leverage uh, when you're winding it in. It, they don't just drop in. You really need a good 50 degrees uh, difference. And, um, and there's no way that I was going to stick this in the oven because I would have been sleeping in the garage tonight. Um, Coefficient of linear expansion for steel is around 12 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by the um, distance over which you're acting, which is 75 mil, times the temperature difference, in which in this case was ambience 20, and I think that freezes, I don't know, you know what, free, minus 10, minus 5, it's not, it's not a great deal. So say it's about 30 degrees difference. Really, um, life would have made, been made a lot easier if it was something like a 50, 60 degree difference. But it went in okay. 